Yes, he is. Even throw through some of the troubles in our life that come up against us. And we ask, Lord, why? Or we ask, Lord, where are you? God is always good through it all. But as the weeks went on, I've asked the Lord many times, what would you have me? What would be the message? What would be the message? And the only thing that keeps coming back to my mind as the week went on was the blood. Bless your heart. I kept thinking about the blood. And how precious the blood is. It's more precious than silver or gold. The, pre the precious blood of Jesus Christ is the only blood. That precious blood from the Lamb of God uh, was the only Lamb that could ever be slain. Uh, that it, the Bible says that He was forced or He was slain before the foundations of the world. Uh, that it was already foreordained. Uh, that brother Lesting, that yeah. God knew that we would need something to be able to redeem us back to Him and it had to be more precious than just an old ram or just a bull ox or a turtle dove or a lamb without spot or without blemish but it had to come through and by the only true lamb and that was the Lamb of God the only one brother James that could shed his precious blood was Jesus Christ that we may be not be atoned for our sins uh, but praise be to the Lamb of God uh, that brother less than uh, that we can be forgiven uh, of our sin uh, I've got a verse here it'll be God's will this morning we're going to read this uh, in I believe the third chapter of the book of Romans but I thought this week Lord uh, what is it about the blood uh, and how precious blood brother G or brother less than I that the blood is uh, the blood it is the gospel of God. It is the, the, the gospel. I thought about these churches today and those people, Brother Lester, they don't want the blood mentioned. Oh, it's just too graphic. Well, I want you to know this morning. Oh, if you ask Mary how graphic it was when she was standing at the foot of the cross, Brother James, and the blood just poured down her son's head from them thorns uh, that they pressed upon his head uh, and the blood uh, that poured from his hands uh, where they drove the spikes uh, the blood that come out of his feet brother James uh, ask Mary uh, how graphic it was uh, but I want you to know uh, that blood must have been shed uh, over in 927 uh, of the book of Hebrew uh, brother Lester it tells us uh, without the shedding of blood uh, there is no remission of sin. I want you to know this morning. What's that word remission mean? What is the meaning of that preacher? Oh, it's forgiveness, Brother James. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. You cannot be forgiven without that blood that must have been shed. Good preaching, And it was shed because for me and you. It was shed because, as Sister Norman said this morning, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever would believe it in him uh, should not perish uh, but have everlasting life uh, the Bible says in another part uh, that it's not God's will uh, that any should perish uh, but all come into repentance uh, that we realize uh, brother Brian uh, one day I thought this here uh, I thought man the best day of my life uh, was the day that I give my life to Jesus uh, but no, uh, it was not uh, the best day of my life. Uh, was the day that I realized that I was lost. Uh, I was undone. Uh, I was a sinner. And I needed Jesus. Amen. That was the best day. Uh, because I realized, Brother James, yep. that without Jesus, I could not be saved. Amen. I could not be forgiven. That is the truth. But I had Amen. to realize that I was lost. Uh, Yeah. And the 
only way to be saved is through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Where He shed His blood Bless for you. Bless him all. He done it for you because He loved you. It was the only thing that could forgive your sin. We read there in the Bible there, Brother Lesson, where it goes all the way back to the very beginning. Now, the blood has been shed from Genesis to the book of Revelation. It's all about the blood. Oh, we often wonder. Uh, there's nothing satisfies God uh, but the shedding of blood. Uh, something always has to die, Brother James. Uh, we read there in the very beginning uh, where Adam and Eve, uh, when they sinned in the garden, uh, and I believe the Bible says that God come down uh, in the cool of the day. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that Adam heard his voice uh, and he said, Adam, where are thou? Realize that he must have killed something uh, because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Uh, without the shedding of blood, uh, Brother Danny, there is no forgiveness. Uh, so we believe uh, that he killed an animal. God himself slain an animal that Adam and Eve uh, may be forgiven of their sin. Uh, yes, they got cast out of the garden. Uh, yes, they weren't allowed to go back. Uh, but praise be to God. Uh, God Sometimes I'll get myself a little carried away. We just come to mind the Lord this morning. And pray that God will use me as a mouthpiece this morning that maybe someone here that's lost and undone will realize where they stand. They stand. That they have no hope without Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. But I want you to know this morning that that precious blood was shed. And it was shed for you and me. And it was shed for that one. If he had just realized that I am lost, that Lord, I need you, that he said that it wasn't his will that any perish but all come to repentance, that he died for you. And it don't matter about your sin. It don't matter about how far you went. 
how deep you've been. Brother James, he'll save the one that only told a little white lie that some say, well, it's just a little white lie, but to God, sin sins. They ain't no big sins and they ain't no little sins. Uh, it don't matter the one that stole a three cent piece of bubble gum uh, will be cast in the devil's hell. The same as stole a $180,000 Fiori. Uh, it don't matter to God. Uh, sin is sin. Uh, but I want you to know one thing this morning. Uh, all that precious blood, Brother James, that that was shed on Calvary. If you'll realize that uh, and you'll apply it to your heart, uh, oh, praise be to God. Uh, God will no longer see you. Uh, he'll no longer see your sin. Uh, but when he looks down, uh, he'll say, hey, uh, the blood, uh, it's been applied. Uh, that blood, uh, it's been applied to the heart. That's one of mine now. That's one of mine. Amen. But there in the 25th verse of the third chapter of the book of Romans, it says, Whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sin that are passed through the forbearance of God. Now listen here, church. I thought about that as I read this and I thought, Lord, uh, what is really propitiation? What does that mean? Uh, I know I'm just a dumb old truck driver and I don't know a whole lot. Uh, but listen, they may be somebody here uh, that don't really know what that means either. Uh, I want you to know this morning uh, that means gift. Uh, that's a, for a gift from God. Uh, that God has given us a gift uh, through faith in His blood to declare the remission, the forgiveness. And I thought, well, Lord, what does forbearance mean? Uh, what is that word? Uh, what is the meaning, Brother James? Because yep. if you don't know the meaning of the word, uh, then it just ain't got no meaning to it. It don't mean that much to me. Uh, but I want you to know, uh, after I learned what the meaning of this word was, oh, it brought it all different, Brother Leston. Uh, it made this all different. Uh, I want you to know what the meaning of forbearance means. Uh, it is to have patience. Uh, even though the things that was owed to us. Uh, see, guess what, Brother Brian? Uh, I deserved hell. Uh, there was no other way I deserved to go to hell, but through and by Jesus Christ, uh, God's forbearance, uh, He had patience Preach. with me, uh, and He took what I deserved and took it away. Uh, oh, and He gave me mercy. Uh, he gave me grace, uh, and He knew the same for you. And all you must do is believe in God. And we know that it's always been a blood sacrifice. Look here, if we flip over here to the book of Hebrews, and we read here in the ninth chapter, and in the 14th verse, he said, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot or without blemish? Now look, if we go on over here, and we read in the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews, he said, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, uh, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of of the throne of God. Uh, even though Christ, uh, oh, he despised the shame. Uh, I want to thank him sometimes, Brother Leslie, uh, the Jesus in the flesh. Uh, oh, he despised having to go to that cross. Uh, he knew the, 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 the punishment that was going to come. He knew the shame that was going to come. He knew they was mocking going to come. And we know when he was in the garden uh, and he went and he prayed, uh, he said, Lord, if it'll be the Father, it'll be thy
Yeah. And thank you, Jesus, because he hung back to the Lord. And the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. But to us, we might wonder why. Why, Lord, why would you make him suffer like that? Why? As we spoke earlier, Brother James, uh, it's always took the shedding of the blood. Jesus said in one part, He said, no greater friend than lay it down His life. Or no greater... I'll get it right here. Miss. No greater love than a man to lay it down His life for His friend. Amen. And Brother Ed, I thought of you. And I thought about Brother Roger. As we said, people don't want to mention the blood. People don't want to mention the blood. That's just too bright. That's too awful. They don't want to see a picture of Jesus hanging on the cross. Oh, that's just too awful. Well, I want you to know we ought to love to look at the cross. Uh, we ought to love to see what you love to give me for me. Uh, we ought to love to see it. Uh, it ain't too bright. Uh, I thought Brother Red and shoot me uh, let us fall in war. Uh, have been in war. Uh, you go up there at that big cemetery they got. Uh, that's over 100,000 some soldiers that have shed their blood. Uh, that you and me uh, may be able to come out to a house today and worship freely. Uh,
There's a wonderful to know that that book of Jesus is lying to you. So, it'll forgive you. Aren't you glad that some of you that it don't just become you? That we've got to keep going back and get you. And that's what I want to hear. And do it over and over and over. Yes, sir. 
So when you lay down the old man, and you take up the new man, you realize, that we said before, that I'm lost. I have no hope that you will without Jesus. And when you do that, I'll be pleased. I believe God will just have to say, you are part of the world. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. We read there that the little prodigal son, I believe Brother Lesson, the Bible says there, uh, I believe that he took all he had. Uh, he took his, his inheritance. Uh, oh, it's hard to say how much money it might have been. Uh, but Brother Lesson, he was just living. Uh, I want to use my words if it'll be all right. I said I was a dumb old country boy. I like to talk country talk. Uh, I believe he was living high on the hog. Oh, I believe he was living in love. Uh, oh,
us. Uh, you can walk the Christian life. You can become a child of God. Uh, you can endure to the very end. Because the Bible says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. How can we endure to the very end, Brother James? Amen. It's through and by Jesus Christ. Uh, it's through and by His power. It's through and by His help. Yeah. I wouldn't make it two days in this. Probably would have made it 12 hours. And I would have been ready to turn around and go back out into the world. But ain't you glad when you truly give your heart to Christ? Yes. Oh, He, he does so. Yes. He fills you full of the Holy Spirit. He pours His Spirit out on you. And when you have His Spirit poured out on you, then you can overcome. He has made us overcomers, Sister Daddy. That we can overcome today. We can overcome the world. How can we do this, preacher? Through and by His blood. It's all about His blood. It's about the flesh and blood of Christ. That we must know through faith, as we read, through faith you must believe in all your heart. Do I see the blood, Brother James? I think an x-ray machine or an MRI gunner at Cabo Hunting Hospital, Brother Leslie, that you can, can see that blood. But praise be to God, I don't need no x-ray machine to tell me that the blood has been applied. I know it's been applied. You ought to know this morning whether it's been applied or not. And have another faith. Uh, oh, what is faith? Uh, faith is the thing that says, mm -hmm. let me get it out. Uh, oh, it's the thing hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Uh, and it's seen, then it ain't faith, is it? It ain't something you ought to hope for. Oh, I used to hope that I'd get my paycheck on Friday. But guess what? When I was holding it in my hand, Brother Jane, I didn't have to hope no more, did I? I had it. You're right. Guess what? I don't see the blood, but praise be to God, I know it's a lot. I'm 
I know I'll give it to someone else one day, Brother Neil, and I guess that's all right. That a child will get it, or somebody will get it, maybe even the bank will get it back, I don't know. But I've often wondered, why do we put so much emphasis on this life? When this life is going to come to an end. Yes, sir. This life is not going to be here forever for you or me. Gentlemen, no. we're leaving here. Amen. And I'm thankful this morning for myself that I know 